Hey guys, today I'm doing Monteverde from Hack the Box. This was a medium 30 point Windows box created by Egress. We start this box off with our in-map scan that shows some LDAP ports and SMB. We don't find any passwords, so we test the usernames as passwords and we get a match for the user SA batch jobs. We look through the shares that we have access to and we find an Azure XML and mhopes directory that contains a password that allows us to log on to the box as mhope. Once we're on the box, we can see during our usual enumeration that we are a member of the Azure admins group. And after some research, we find a script that can recover the administrator credentials from the Azure AD Connect service. This allows us to remote into the box as administrator. Let's get started. Okay, we start this box off with nmap, sv, sc, oa, put it in the nmap directory, Monteverde. And the IP address is 10, 10, 10, 172. I've already run this, so let's take a look at the output. Okay, and we see we have a bunch of ports open. We see LDAP ports, uh, RPC, 445 for SMB. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our notes started. I'll do this down here. Okay, so let's start with RPC and see if we can get anything with RPC client. We'll give it no username and the IP address. No password. Okay, we'll try uh, enumerating users with enum dom users. And we get a list of users. Let's go ahead and copy this. Put it down here. And uh, I'm actually going to take a second to clean this list up. So we have a nice user list. And the way I'll do this is I'll just echo what we just copied. And uh, I'm going to pipe that through to cut and set the delimiter as the open brace, which is this one. So everything to the left would be the first field and everything to the right up until the next open brace which is this one, would be the second field, and then not the third. So we want the second field. And uh, we're going to pipe that through to cut again and set the delimiter as the close brace. And we want, this would be the first field. So we want to get the first field. And we have a clean list of users. So I'm going to put that in a file called users. And I think we have, yeah, we have an a blank line at the end, so I'll just delete that. And now we have a clean list of users. So let's get out of that and let's see if we can get any groups. And uh, we have some groups. So we can see in our users that we have this strange AAD underscore 987 user. And in our groups, we also see Azure admins. Uh, so this box may have something to do with Microsoft Azure. So we have uh, some groups. We can, I believe it's get uh, the domain password info. And so this shows us that there are absolutely no requirements for password properties. So oh, we have a minimum length of seven. So it must be seven, but nothing else really matters. And uh, we can query display info, which will get stuff like comments if there's a comment in any of the users. 
And all, all we see is names. We don't really see anything important. So we can get out, we can, we're done here. Uh, actually, we see a description for that AAD user, which is service account for synchronization service. So this could be interesting. Okay, now, now I think we're done. Okay, so let's get out of here. And since we had no password requirements, um, well, we can also try to list any shares on the domain with SMB client, which anonymous login was successful, but we see no shares. Okay, so I'm gonna close that pane. So there were no password requirements set except for a minimum length. Uh, so one thing you can do is you can run crack map exec and you can just feed um, or use SMB and you can feed it the IP, a user list, which would be users and a password list, which we're just going to try the usernames as passwords, like this. Now, the problem with this, you'll see when I run it, is that it's going to test each one of those users against each one of those passwords. So if this was a really long list, it's going to take forever, because it's testing guests against each one of these passwords, or each one of these users as the password. So it could take a long time if you have a long list. So instead, we can write a small script, um, and we'll just name it test usernames against SMB. And so what we can do here is we can just write a for loop. Well, we'll, we'll have it accept two parameters, uh, one and two. And the first one can be the IP address. And the second one, let's call it IP. And the second one can be the username file. So we can say for I in cap usernames, do crack map exec. SMB, the IP address, the username, which is going to be for like each line in usernames will be I. It'll run through this and it'll do the first one and it'll run and do the second one. So we'll feed it the username and the password as both I. And then it'll just check on the same line all the way through once. And then we can be done. So then if we did test usernames with uh, the IP address and the username file, which was users, it should run through and test the user against, or test the user for its password. So see how it's trying guest guest. And then it's doing the AAD against the AAD. So it's running through each one of these. And so we get a match for SA batch jobs. I'm going to let that finish running. And then uh, we'll put this in our notes.
Okay, and it's done. So let's see if we can list any shares with SA batch jumps. Specify username, SA batch jumps, and the password. And we see a lot of shares. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through SMB map, which will tell us which ones we can read. And I don't know how to use this. I forget. OK, perfect example. So we're just going to do SMB map minus U minus P minus H. And we, can, we see we have read-only access to some of these. Oops. Need a set paste. Here we go. Okay, so let's start checking these out. Uh, so we can read Azure uploads. So SMB client 172. With the user SA batch jobs and the password. Okay, and see if we can list anything. Nothing. So let's go to the next one. We have a remote IPC, net logon, sysvol, and users. Uh, users could be interesting. So let's go ahead and connect to that one. If we don't find anything good in there, we can connect to the others. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a directory and call it users share. We'll go in there and do this. this. That way, if there's anything, it'll get saved in that directory and not clutter up our current directory. So in here, uh, we see a lot of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my mask. I'm going to set recurse on. I'm going to turn the prompt off so it doesn't prompt me for stuff. And then I'm going to try to get everything I can. And so this will pull down everything recursively. And it only got one file. So let's go take a look at that. So if we go into mhope, we see Azure XML. Let's take a look. And we see a key ID, which is nothing, and a password. So let's put this in our notes. Used SMB client to get files in 10, 10, 10, 172 users in mhope. We found azure.xml and we found a password. So I'm sure you can take a guess as to what we want to do with this. We want to test it against the user we found it in. So we could try SMB again. Uh, so this would be crack map exec with a minus 
for SMB. 10, 10, 10, 172. The user. And the password. Oh, I messed that up. The user was mhope. And the password. And the reason I'm putting this in quotes is because of all these special characters. Um, that way it doesn't do anything weird. And it works. So what we can try with this is we can try uh, evil winner in to see if we can get a shell in the box. And uh, we'll specify the IP or interface. I'm not sure what that stands for. As 10, 10, 10, 1, 7, 2. And we'll give it a user, which is mhope. We can get out of this because we're done with it. And our password was on our clipboard. I think it was on our clipboard. Okay, so we're on the box. So if we go back, is this our user.txt user? It is, so we can grab the user.txt with download. Just download user.txt. It's a handy feature of the evil WinRM shell. And so this should download to our Monte Verde directory because that's where we were. So we can check users.txt or user.txt and we can see we have it. So we've got user. Now, how do we get beyond user? We can start with our standard enumeration, which is just checking who am I? And we see group names, remote management users, which means you can just um, do what we just did, get onto the box remotely. Uh, part of the users group. These are uh, Windows 2000 compatible access. Part of the network, authenticated users, this organization, and we see Azure admins. And also NT LM authentication, which I'm not super sure if this is a standard, but I think that means that we could pass a hash if all we had was a hash. Um, so similar to when we were looking at, uh, what was it, SMB map and we, in the help. This here, this is just a hash, so this is trying to pass the hash instead of a password to SMB. So if we had something like that, we may be able, may, may, we may be able to get onto the box as well. But anyway. We see that we're a part of Azure admins, so whenever you see something like this and it's a strange group, especially since we saw that uh, synchronization user and the Azure admins group when we were enumerating the domain, we want to take a look at this. Uh, so we can just check out Google. And uh, you can see the results here on Google are pretty good. There is a blog post, and I believe it's by XDN, who talks about this, and I really like his explanation. Is it XDN? XPN, not XDN. So XPM. Uh, so he kind of goes through and talks about this. And we can go back and explore exactly what it does here in a second. And this is his script. So pretty much what this is doing is it's connecting to the database, opening it, running this query, which is select key set instance entropy from this database or from this table. Then it does another select statement.
and it's pretty much going through and getting stuff out of an XML. And then it's writing the decrypted password. So it looks like it connects to a database where there's encrypted credentials and it's not really secure and there's some way to decrypt it. So he has a proof of concept here. And there is a proof of concept for this exploit. And it is um, here it is on hack players, PS, Kabesha, tools, privesk. So there's a lot of different privilege escalations in here. Uh, sure, I guess Sherlock's in here. Um, backup to system will get you from a backup user to a system account. DNS to system, and we saw that in an earlier box. So looking at the AD Connect one, we can see that it's literally based on this blog. Um, so the only difference really is this is statically set in his in in this proof of concept, and this one allows you to pass in the server and the database's arguments. So we're going to go ahead and use this one. So in order to get this on the box, I am just going to, what was the name of it? Azure AD Connect. I'm going to write this to a file and we'll just upload it. We'll go back into documents and we'll just make a directory called temp. Oh, it does show up. I, I thought maybe we could make a hidden directory here because it's, it's never a great idea to just do whatever you're doing for privess directly on the users home directory or whatever. So we're going to see. We'll just do it back here, which probably not much better practice, but that's OK. We're going to delete it after we're done. Oh, we're going to upload it. Azure AD Connect dot PS1. So it looks like it's uploaded. And when we look at this proof of concept, it kind of gives us exactly what to do, which is invoke the script. So we can, I think it's, Invoke. No, import maybe. Import module. I don't remember how to get. So we want to load this functions directly so we can call it because we want to call it and then we want to pass it a server and then a database. I think it's import module. If it's not, we're going to be back on Google in a second because I'm not that great at PowerShell. Um, huh, like that maybe? Ah, okay, so that may have worked. What was it? Azure AD Connect. Like this? Perfect. So it works. So that's how you get it in there. Okay, so we're gonna go put this in our notes real quick. So we are a member of the Azure Admins group. 
right? That was the name of our group. Yeah, Azure Admins group. We'll put in the relevant links. Original post. Cool. So now we have those for later. What I wanted to do was copy this. That way I don't forget how to import modules. And I know this takes a lot of time, but it's important to keep notes and I'm finding that is more and more true every day. It gives you something better to look back on. So from here, um, we have the Azure AD connect function that we can run and uh, we want to pass it a server and our server is localhost, so 172.0.0.1 and we're not sure the database name but we can try a desync since we saw the synchronized user. This is probably what it is. So we run this. And it works and we get the domain password. Or the domain administrator password, I should say. So we'll try to log in as administrator. So I'll keep my shell open and then we'll try Eva Winner in 10, 10, 10, 1, 7, 2 with the user administrator. And the password is on our clipboard. And we're in as administrator. So who am I? Administrator. So let's go back to the desktop. Do we see root.txt? We do. Let's download it. Download root.txt. Can we do an operation on it? I mean, if we downloaded it, surely we can. And we see we've got it. So we've got root.txt. Um, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I do want to take a second to look into exactly what this is doing. I know that it is doing these SQL commands, but I at least want to go over what exactly is happening and maybe put it in my notes. So when we're looking at this, I'm looking for more of a summary. So it looks like it, it's going through this XML that it can get with this select statement. And the encrypted password is actually stored within a field called encrypted configuration. And you may need to load this DLL. Does this one load that DLL? Yes, so it grabs a DLL and from the DLL, it's able to get the information to decrypt the password. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put the exploit point of concept in as administrator. I just want to read in 
that file, which was Azure AD Connect. Okay. All right, and so that's going to be pretty much it for this box. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next week.